How long do we have? Seven days. You can't protect. Welcome to my channel. I'm Frankie and this is Let's Get Real, as today I'm reviewing the 26th film in the MCU, Eternals. A race of immortal beings with superhuman abilities known as the Eternals reunite after secretly living on Earth for thousands of years to battle the otherworldly threat, the Deviants. Similar to Shang-Chi, I wasn't familiar with the Eternals until the announcement of this movie. However, I am familiar with this film's director Chloe Zhao, who won Best Picture and Best Director at the Academy Awards this year for her work on No Man Land. So I couldn't help but get excited for this film, because with how oscar winning directors always love to rip apart superhero films, it's not every day you would see one actually directing one of them. However, as of the time I'm recording this, Eternals has set an all-time low for the MCU, where it has received the worst reviews of any film in the franchise's 13-year run. But honestly, after watching the film for myself, I'm genuinely wondering if we all saw the same film. It's been a long time since I've been able to call a movie enchanting. Eternals takes the MCU to a new territory by bringing a large-scale visual epic to the franchise, filled with so much heart and creativity poured into every second, and completes itself with a story so original that it's insane to think that this is an official MCU project, and not some side universe from a different studio. In my Shang-Chi review, I mentioned how that film and Black Panther are so different from what you'd expect from this franchise, that you forget you're watching a Marvel movie. Well, Eternals takes that to a whole new level, in the best way, where it doesn't need 25 other films to stand on its own, and gives Marvel a fresh breath of originality that you don't normally see in superhero movies these days. The film's story is also told in a very deep and compelling way, where there's an underlying message of self-purpose that goes on among the Eternals, where they question what their purpose is as an individual human without the authority of a celestial, and if they want to make a difference for the humans they've grown to love, could their will to break free or restrictions cause more harm than good? The stakes are also felt very high in this film, which is impressive because this isn't a turning point film like Endgame or Infinity War, but the threat in this movie felt real, and yet they also managed to deliver some pretty good comedy at the perfect time. This film put that Best Visual Effects award in the bag. The CGI and effects are astounding and blend into the settings that fight scenes so naturally and look so fleshed out with the monster effects or creative as heck like the eternal superhuman abilities. Never once does the CGI feel like it interferes with the film like other Marvel movies, and instead adds to the fantasy action theme the movie is trying to take on. Most of the acting is insanely good as well. Each character is given their own arcs and personal conflicts, making each one so lovable and compelling in their own right. Really, it's hard to not come out of this movie and not like one character. I'll admit that I wasn't too big of a fan of Gamma Chan's performance as Cersei, since it felt like it was kind of lacking for a lead in one of these films, but it was still pretty good as a whole. And Angelina Jolie unfortunately didn't stand out too much in this, especially since her character is given one of the hardest conflicts to overcome in the film. And yet her performance lacked tension. However, they don't really bother me since every other performance is great. Richard Madden is amazing as Icarus, where he feels like one of the most fleshed out characters in the film. Salma Hayek is perfect as Ajax, and she gives off such a bold and emotional performance as this leader of a superhuman family. Lee McHugh was pretty good as Sprite, and she even has a unique conflict that gets pretty interesting and even emotional by the end. Brian Tyree Henry was so great as Fastos, and he has a surprisingly dark conflict that I'm surprised was allowed by Marvel. Lauren Ridloff gave such a rich performance as Makari, and has some good comedic moments by the end of the film. Madan Sok is so fun as Gilgamesh. Barry Kogan has a very interesting conflict with his character, Druig. And Kid Harrington, despite not being in the film that much, was very enjoyable as Dane. Personally, my favorite character and performance had to have been Komal Nanjini as Kingo. He was just so energetic and quirky as this spotlight-loving superhero and film star. Personally, the runtime and pacing wasn't a problem for me, despite this being longer and slower than your average superhero movies, since it allowed it to fit in those storylines and conflicts with the characters, while also balancing exposition with its compelling storytelling. The directing was also distinct and phenomenal. Chloe Zhao was able to deliver a unique, grand cinematic experience that no modern superhero movie could offer. The cinematography was also so astounding. Never has an MCU movie felt as big in scale as this, thanks to the wide locations they were able to capture. And the costume design was also well done. 
Some problems I have with this film include the weird editing decisions made for this film. I don't know if it's because I saw this movie in IMAX, but the film kept constantly switching between a widescreen and IMAX ratio non-stop. Again, I'm not sure if this was the fault of the movie itself or the theater, so I'm not sure if I could count this as a criticism right now until this comes out in digital and I can find out for sure. Also, this film ends abruptly, and I mean really abruptly. Dune and Quiet Place Part 2 wish they could have cut to black like this. Seriously, this is the worst MCU movie? Is this uh, an out-of-season April Fool's joke? Eternals delivers a bold, ambitious epic to the MCU and presents a large-scale and compelling story that no other film in the franchise could offer. This film might not work for everyone since it's so different, but it's definitely worth checking out for everything I've mentioned, and be sure to see this on the biggest screen possible. And if you don't like it, you should at least respect the lengths it goes to to separate itself from other superhero movies, and the ambition the team put in. So yeah, I love this film, and I'm not ashamed to say it. This was a huge surprise for me. I was not expecting to like it so much with all the other negative reviews going on. Hopefully this could develop a cult following so that one day it could get the respect it deserves. I'm giving Eternals a 9 out of 10. So what are your thoughts on Eternals? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Do you think this is the worst MCU movie? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for more videos. I bet you've built the perfect safe house. And what's this even made of? Vibranium? <laughs>